Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben. Nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to the bright side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the bright side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is always a healing system, a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we can help you. Our number on the bright side is 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health or prescription drugs, the longevity products, something you may have heard about or read about, we can help you out. If you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. And if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products right off the website, or you can call 866-735-2470. That's our Brightside Ben phone team. You can order products by calling 866-735-2470, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. You can do it off the websites as well, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And for you guys looking for a good source of protein, bone broth protein is the way to go. It's, uh, it's not necessarily a replacement protein for whey protein or egg protein, but it's another source of protein, a source of protein that features cartilage and connective tissue building amino acids. As we age, much of the visible signs of the aging process involve connective tissue breakdown. That includes osteoporosis and wrinkles and circulatory system problems. If you want to build your connective tissue, if you're dealing with leaky gut syndrome, that can also be a connective tissue problem. If you want to deal with connective tissue issues, if you want to prevent wrinkles, improve skin health, you want to know about bone broth protein, and you can find out all about it at brightsidehealth.com. And if you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, go to truthtreatments.com. Make sure you take a special long look at our retinol 5% gel made with retinol and vitamin C and no preservatives, fragrance, filler, oil, wax, water, emulsifying agent, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. That's the way I formulate my products with just active and functional ingredients. Truth Skin Health. Uh, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. If you're going to be, uh, if you're in the Chicago area, I'm going to be doing a talk in, uh, in the Chicago area. I'm trying to find the details right here. Uh, let's see. It's going to be uh, Tuesday, August 16th. That would be a week from tomorrow at the Armada Hotel and Conference Center in Glendale Heights, Illinois, 780 North Avenue. 780 North Avenue, Glendale Heights, Illinois, zip 60139, the Armada Hotel. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. I'll be on at 7 o'clock, and we're going to talk about various health challenges and ways, ways that you can deal with health challenges using nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Much of what we talk about here on the Bright Side, except more in-depth. Can't really go in depth, as in-depth as I'd like to go on this program. We don't have a lot of time, but in my presentations, you leave knowing more than most medical professionals know. And it's not that complicated either. It's entertaining, it's interesting, and I love doing it. I've been doing presentations now for over 20 years. 
If you're in the Chicago area, that's Glendale Heights, 601, uh, Glendale Heights, Illinois, zip 60139 at the Armada Hotel and Conference Center, 780 North Avenue. Hope to see you there. Okay, welcome back to the bright side once again. We're talking fat, dietary fat, not necessarily the fat that's found in our bodies, and not distinguishing these two kinds of fat. The fat that's on our bodies and the fat that we eat has led to a lot of misunderstandings about food and about diet and what we should and should not be eating. You don't necessarily get fat by eating fat. The fat on our bodies is a biological substance that's extremely important and functional and responsive to hormones. Whether or not we have uh, excessive body fat is not so much a, fat, a matter of eating the fat as it is a hormonal response to certain foods, particularly carbohydrate, sugar foods. That's really the reason why we get fat. It's the sugars and the starches. Got, uh, there's hundreds of different types of fat in the body. The steroid hormones, cholesterol, the most well-known are the triglycerides. Fats are important for all of, the uh, all of the body's organs and glands, particularly the brain and the nervous system and the skin. Fats act as messengers. They help proteins do their jobs. They make hormones. They're involved in chemical reactions that support the immune system and growth and reproduction and other aspects of biological survival. As far as so-called body fat goes, that's the kind of fat that we have on our guts and our hips and our butts and our thighs. That kind of fat is both a curse and a blessing. Now, it's a curse because uh, for cosmetic reasons, we, have, uh, we live in a culture where we don't like to be fat. You know, it wasn't but 100 years ago that you were considered beautiful if you were a little bit ro uh, round, rotund, rubenesque. Body fat was a sign that you were wealthy. It wasn't even that long, it was about 100 years ago, 150 years ago. These days, fat is considered to be cosmetically unappealing and something that Americans spend tens of billions of dollars every year on getting rid of. From a health and functional standpoint, body fat is very important stuff. While it may be a curse in terms of its cosmetic appearance, it's a blessing in terms of its ability to act as insulation and help us regulate our body temperature and store energy. Fat has a shock absorbing effect that acts to cushion and protect our vital organs, particularly our brain. Technically speaking, you have two kinds of body fat. The most obvious and visible kind is called sub-Q or subcutaneous, which means under the skin, fat. This is the kind of fat that shows up as our love handles or on our hips and our thighs. If you've ever had a body fat analysis done with calipers, well, they'll, they'll grip your, the fat under your triceps. What you've had measured was your subcutaneous under the skin fat. When you get liposuction, it's the subcutaneous fat that's removed. This kind of fat can be very difficult to get rid of. It represents the body's way of making sure there's enough fat for our energy needs and it's stored in response to hormones, especially cortisol and insulin. Belly fat can be subcutaneous as well. The second type of fat is called visceral fat, and this is the kind of fat that is very troubling. It's the kind of fat that's deep inside the body, and this is the fat that really has an impact on our health, even though, at least in the early stages of its accumulation, you're not going to necessarily be able to see it. In fact, you can have too much visceral fat without even being overweight or obese. Eventually, however, visceral fat is going to show up as a protruding belly or as a large waist, and by that time, it's been building up for, for years, maybe even for decades. Visceral fat is mostly stored in the abdomen and wraps around our various internal organs, including the liver, the pancreas, and the intestines. Accumulation of visceral fat, like the subcutaneous fat, is associated with sugar intake as well as the hormones insulin and cortisol. And it's the visceral fat that's associated with diabetes and heart disease and an early demise. Visceral fat is also associated with inflammation and the production of hormones. In fact, visceral fat is considered to be an organ in and of itself. When our visceral fat accumulates, it's like having an enlarged heart or an enlarged liver. It throws off the body's overall biochemistry pretty significantly. Fortunately, visceral fat is much easier to lose than subcutaneous fat. According to Dr. Samuel Klein, professor of medicine and nutritional science at Washington, uh, Washington University School of Medicine, when we change our diets and start an exercise program, we lose visceral fat twice as fast as sub-Q. 
the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com. If you miss a program, they're all reviewable. Or if you want to review a program, they're all reviewable. And there's a search engine on both websites, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase longevity products from brightsideben.com as well as pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com and you can purchase Truth Skin Health products. Our Truth Treatments Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream and Truth Serum loaded with vitamin C. Great if you're dealing with dark spots or hyperpigmentation or you want to heal from something burn or sunburn. If you've got a baby with diaper rash, our Omega-6 Healing Cream works great for that. All our True Skin Health products are made with only active and functional ingredients, never any preservatives, wax, filler, oil, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in our True Skin Health products. If you're in the Chicago area, I'll be doing a talk in Glendale Heights, Illinois on Tuesday, August 16th. That's a week from this Tuesday. Doors open at 6.30. Hope to see you there. Uh, let's see if i got a phone number for you. Mm, do, 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 do. No, no phone number here. It's going to be at the Armada Hotel and Conference Center. I'll have to get a phone number here for you to call for information. I'll get that uh, for our next segment. Uh, anything else I want to tell you here? Bone broth protein at brightsidehealth.com. If you want a good source of protein for helping build connective tissue, that's brightsidehealth.com. Bone broth protein tastes awesome, too. Okay, so we're talking fat, visceral fat versus abdominal fat. Visceral fat makes hormones. Visceral fat throws off our biochemistry, our body's biochemistry. Visceral fat is associated with diabetes and insulin resistance and strokes and heart disease. It's the visceral fat that's the bad stuff. And fortunately, it's the visceral, visceral fat that's easy for the body to, uh, or, or easier for the body to uh, eliminate. Exercise, diet, changing the way you eat, that will help you eliminate the visceral fat. Now, the the subcutaneous fat, the kind of fat that you can pinch, that fat is not going to go away quite as fast. In fact, the, the subcutaneous fat can be pretty darn hard to lose. But the, the internal fat and the fat that shows up on our bellies over the course of time, the so-called visceral fat, that is much, much easier to lose. And once you start a diet program or an exercise program, basically when it comes to diet, you want to restrict the amount of carbs that you eat. No matter what you hear, there, there are people out there talking about the importance of eating a lot of carbs. And one guy, Dr. John McDougall, actually has a book called The Starch Solution, which talks about how important it is to eat lots of starch and potatoes. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. And if you're trying to lose weight, one of the best things you could do is go low carbohydrate. This is where the ketogenic diet comes in. And we're not done talking about the ketogenic diet either. So many reasons why fat is important, not just as a source of energy, but it's a substance that participates in biochemical reactions. It's a biochemically active substance, and this is why it's good stuff, and this is why it's bad stuff. It's good because you need to have the biochemistry, the hormones that are secreted via fat, but it's bad because if you got too much fat, it's going to throw off the chemistry. On our last program, we started talking about one of my all-time favorite fats, a essential fatty acid derivative, an omega-6 derivative called CLA. The chemical name for omega-6 fats is linoleic acid, and CLA is a version of linoleic acid, conjugated linoleic acid, CLA. It's got some wonderful health benefits, especially for weight loss. And CLA is an ideal supplement to use if you're trying to go ketogenic. If it's, it makes an ideal adjunct to the ketogenic diet. CLA is a powerful anti-inflammatory. If you're dealing with arthritis or sinus pain or your post-surgery, CLA can be a godsend. Even if you don't have pain due to inflammation, you can still take advantage of the anti-inflammatory effects of CLA. You may not necessarily be dealing with inflammatory pain, but inflammation can wreak havoc on the chemistry of the body even if pain is not involved. Inflammation is a defensive response. Inflammation is the way that the immune system does its work. Inflammation is a sign that we've got some kind of immune activity, immune system activity. And when the immune system is activated, growth and repair will slow down. This is so important to understand. Because anti-aging, or aging I should say, accelerated aging is a sign that growth and repair slow down. That means long-term chronic inflammation, even if there's not pain involved, is going to accelerate the aging process. 
It's going to accelerate the rate of our breakdown. Long-term chronic low-level inflammation will cause osteoporosis. It will cause wrinkles. It will cause a failure to build muscle. All of this, many of the, if not all of the structural problems associated with the, with the aging process are linked to this long-term low-level chronic inflammation. This is also why inflammation is associated with fat accumulation. And fat accumulation is associated with inflammation. It's a circle. When we have inflammation because our body's being chronically attacked, it's, we're, we're going to be less likely to build muscle and connective tissue. We're going to be more likely to accumulate fat. And the fat itself will cause more inflammation, and you end up with a vicious spiral. And this is why CLA can be so, so important for anti-aging and for weight loss and for fat loss because of its powerful anti-inflammatory benefits. CLA is, a, is found in grasses, and if you want to get CLA, you got to eat grass uh, uh, products from grass-fed animals. You got to eat uh, grass-fed dairy or, or grass-fed, uh, uh, I should say, dairy from grass-fed cattle or cheese from grass-fed cattle or even the meat from grass-fed cattle or grass-fed lamb. These are going to be the best CLA-containing foods. According to an article published in March 2007, in the Journal of Animal Sciences, meat and dairy from grass-fed animals can produce 300 to 500 percent more CLA than those of cattle fed the usual diet of hay and grains. Same with eggs from uh, chickens that have been fed CLA-containing feed or chickens that are, that are eating CLA-containing uh, grasses. These are also rich sources of CLA. Also, as it turns out, unlike ordinary unsaturated fats, CLA in eggs has been shown to be able to withstand the high temperatures associated with cooking and frying. This is a big problem with eggs. When you scramble your eggs or you heat your eggs up, I love eggs. They're, they're an amazing power food. Don't get me wrong. But if you overheat the proteins and the fats in eggs, not only will you be getting less nutritional value, but you can actually be causing, uh, uh, creating toxic compounds. You know, the cholesterol in eggs is not a problem. The cholesterol in eggs is awesome stuff, but the oxy cholesterol, the burnt cholesterol, the oxidized cholesterol, that can indeed be a problem, which is why you want your eggs poached, soft boiled, or even better, you want them raw. And raw eggs don't taste all that bad if you mix them up with your bone broth protein, by the way. In fact, anytime you're doing a protein smoothie, a protein supplement, it's a good idea to crack an egg in there to up the protein value, the nutritional value of your smoothie, and also to make the smoothie creamy. Eggs have emulsifying agents that pull in oils and water together and creates a nice creamy effect, plus a raw egg will taste delicious in combination with protein. If you're vegan, you're going to have to get your uh, CLA from mushrooms, although there's nowhere near as much uh, CLA in mushrooms as there are in animal foods. If you're a vegan, you know, it's tough to get a lot of things. It's tough to get vitamin B12 if you're a vegan. It's tough to get building proteins like taurine uh, and uh, arginine from, um, uh, if you're a vegan. Not that it can't be done. Taurine you can't get, by the way. Taurine is only found in animal foods. But uh, there's a growth factors that are found in animal proteins that you're just not going to be able to get if you're a vegan, which is unfortunate uh, for vegans. You can still do it if you're a vegan, but you've got to be much more careful. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Going to take a quick break. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're talking about today, weight loss, ketogenic diet, body fat, sub-Q fat, hormonal health, skin health, anything you uh, may have read about or heard about on the news or on the internet, 844-236-6010 is your number. We want to be your common sense source of good health information, 844-236-6010 is our number. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you in just a moment. From the journal Rheumat uh, Arthritis and Rheumatology, overweight obesity up the incidence of hand, hip, and knee osteoarthritis. This has to do with the inflammatory factors that are secreted from body fat. And this is very important if you're caring, uh, whether or not you're obviously carrying too much body fat. 
you could be dealing with inflammatory health issues. You may not know that you've got a lot of body fat. Just because you're skinny doesn't mean that you don't have visceral fat, internal fat going on. And this can cause inflammatory, pro uh, inflammatory problems, including uh, arthritis of the hand, hip, and knee, according to this uh, article in uh, the August issue of Arthritis and Rheumatology. Check this out. Average American 15 pounds heavier than a mere 20 years ago. This is from Yale University Prevention Research Center. That's crazy. 20 years, it, how, the average American's body weight has gone up 15 pounds in just 20 years. 20 years is not a long time, folks. Usually it takes decades for these kinds of, uh, or many decades for these kinds of numbers to change, like centuries even. Just 20 years, 15 pounds. From the journal Clinical Nutrition, colonic anti-inflammatory mechanisms of conjugated linoleic acid. Yes, CLA is also an anti-inflammatory for the colon. If you're dealing with Crohn's disease or irritable bowel syndrome or any kind of colonic inflammation, any kind of colonic health issue, you may benefit by using CLA or eating CLA, either getting CLA in a supplement or eating grass-fed beef and dairy. And by the way, Jordan Rubin has a wonderful line of grass-fed dairy products up at Longevity. The Beyond Organic line, formulated by Jordan Rubin, who uh, breeds cattle and produces these products himself. I love the grass-fed CLA-rich cheese, as well as the Amasai and the Swero V. If you're looking to do a fast, you want to do a Swero V cleanse. If you have a hard time fasting or you think you can't fast, it's always great just to fast. But if you have a hard time uh, fasting or you feel like you can't fast, do a Swero V cleanse. Half a bottle of Swero V every hour. The Swero V is made with potassium and sodium, as well as ferment, fermented whey. It'll give you energy. It's a great energy pick-me-up in the middle of the day, even if you're not fasting. And it's pretty darn cheap, the Swero V. You find out all about it from your longevity rep, you, or you can go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and order Swero V right off the website, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. Okay, our number today, 844-236-6010. Let's go off to Joe in Memphis, Tennessee. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, Joe. Good, good morning, um, Pharmacist Vincent. Pharmacist Ben, you, hi. Uh, I'm calling to learn my, my, my youngest son, Jeremy. He's, he's very nervous, but he has a question he wants to ask you about his health. Now, he's okay. saying to me, no. Come on, Jeremy. Okay, pharmacist Ben, he wants to, he's trying to lose weight, and he said that when he eats pork, sometimes he gets dizzy. And pork? also my daughter-in-law, she has a question about her mother. Okay, hang on, Joe. Did you say when he eats pork? Yes, sir. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, you, uh, he's got uh, uh, weight loss issues. How old is Jeremy, by the way? He's 27. Okay. Now, I can't tell you about the pork, but if you have some kind of uh, dizziness that occurs after you eat a food, that's a sign that you should, probably shouldn't be eating that food. What you want to try is um, uh, fasting for a day or two and then eating the pork. In other words, clear the system and then eat the pork and see what happens. Dizziness is usually a sign of some kind of allergic response. And it should be kept in mind that no matter what we eat, even if we eat a salad, there's going to be some kind of infl inflammation that kicks in. So it doesn't have to be, you, you can experience dizziness or inflammatory problems after any kind of food. It doesn't necessarily have to be a blatantly problematic food. Like uh, pork is potentially a, pl a blatantly problematic food, not for a lot of people. But meat in general can be a problem for folks because of hormones and antibiotics. I'm assuming he's just eating regular pork, not organic or, or antibiotic-free or hormone-free. He may want to try various types of pork to see if, if it makes a difference. Um, as far as weight loss goes for a 20, is he severely overweight or is he obese or he just wants to lose a little weight? What's the deal? He's saying obese. <laughs> how, how much? 20 pounds or more that he needs to lose? How much, Jeremy? He said 100. That's a lot. Okay. okay. If he wants to lose 100 pounds and he's got a significant metabolic problem, probably he's diabetic pro or pre-diabetic. So it, it, the good news is he's only 23. He can, lose that, he can lose that 100 pounds probably in six months if he does this correctly. And he can begin to lose it right away. Immediately, he has to start restricting his intake of starches and carbohydrates. Immediately. 100 pounds overweight at the age of 23 is a very serious problem. And it not, does not portend well for the future. So immediately, he has to start restricting his carbs. Uh, it, doesn't go, it won't work just to stop eating because the body will hold on to weight when there's no food present. So he has to eat a little bit, but he wants to focus on protein and good fats. 
uh, get them on the uh, bone broth protein or the slender FX, get them on a whey protein supplement and have him do a little bit of resistance training workout with weights before, uh, be and also aerobic exercise, uh, running a little bit. You don't need to run a lot, maybe two or three minutes is, uh, in a sprint, especially if he's that overweight, even walking up and down the stairs at a brisk pace will, will, uh, provide some aerobic exercise between resistance training, aerobic exercise, and more protein and more fat. He's going to notice that he's starting to lose weight. And he's going to notice that he starts to feel better. Chances are also pretty good that he's got some oxygenation and cardiovascular problems too, if he's that signif significantly overweight. So practicing slow, deep breathing will also help. I would be using fat support nutrients like the B complex, especially niacin. Niacin is incredibly valuable when it comes to helping the body utilize fats, helping the body burn fats, helping improve blood fats. We have a, a, a new product, a new, uh, Longevity has a new product that Dr. Wallach formulated called the Ultimate Niacin. That would help him. Get him on the Healthy Start Pack, absolutely 100% for sure. Have him sipping slowly on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. And then also, uh, I would be using the Sweeties after all his meals, as well as the Ultimate Selenium. You might also want to have him uh, add in a little MSM, which is important for insulin. Uh, and then let's see if there's anything else I want to tell you. Mm, what was the other question you had? That, that ought to cover, uh, uh, Jeremy. Uh, what, what was the other question? Is that for people who want to lose weight? Or? Yes, it's a, it's a way of getting uh, energy without having to eat food. Now keep in mind, if you're 100 pounds overweight, then you're eating uh, and I don't mean to, I don't want to sound like I'm attacking Jeremy here, but he should recognize that he's not just eating for energy. He's not just eating for nutrition. He's eating for dopamine, which is your reward chemical, your reward brain neurotransmitter, your brain chemical. And this is a really important problem when it comes to eating and trying to lose weight, is we don't eat like lions and tigers and bears in the wild. We eat for pleasure, for reward chemistry. And so this is a huge, huge problem when it comes to trying to control the amount of calories we ingest. We're eating for dopamine. We're eating for pleasure so that you can't just stop eating because we're not going to get that pleasure. So what you got to do is you got to find a way to access or to activate dopamine secretion in the brain through other forms of reward. Cleaning the garage can be a source of reward. I have a friend who loves to do to fold laundry and clean things. And she doesn't know it, but what she's doing is she's achieving, she's activating reward chemistry. Her brain feels like it's succeeded at something. This is really, really important a dietary strategy that, that do, most dietitians and, and, and diets don't take, uh, uh, take into account. Hang on, Joe. Finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Joe in Memphis, Tennessee. Joe, are you there, ma'am? Yes, sir, I'm here. This okay. is my daughter-in-law. Her name is Rodrigo, and she has a question about her mother. Okay, let me just say real quickly, let me just finish up real quickly. You've got to figure out a way to reward yourself. And this is true for anybody who wants to lose weight, especially if it's a significant amount of weight. You have to figure out how to reward yourself in a non-caloric fashion. You got to figure out how to reward yourself without eating. And there's lots of ways to do that. Reward chemistry is the kind of chemistry that makes us feel good, that makes us feel like we just won the lottery. And it can be activated by cleaning the garage. It can be activated by completing a project if you've been procrastinating it, or procrastinating doing something. You know that feeling you get when you just finish, finish something you've been procrastinating on for a long time? That good feeling that we get is the result of, of dopamine, a brain chemical. And it's this dopamine that we're looking looking for when we're overeating, at least partially. So figuring out a way to reward yourself, even if it's getting a back rub, have your, if you're married or you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, have them rub your back every time you want to eat. You know, tell them you get a 10 minute back rub, have them help you out, rub your feet, give, give yourself some kind of pleasure or reward in a non-caloric fashion. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very difficult to wean yourself away from food. I'm sorry, Joe, what's, what was your next question? Okay, my daughter-in-law, Rodriguez, she has a question about her mother. Uh, let me say one last thing before I forget. Tyrosine, the amino acid tyrosine, while it may cause a little bit of jitteriness, it can be used to, to help suppress your appetite of 500 milligrams a day. If you get jittery with that, try 100 to 200 milligrams a day. Sorry about that, Joe. Go ahead. Okay, that's okay. Here she is. Hi, my mom is, has colon cancer, and I just was trying to see how I could help her. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. How old's your mom? Um, she's 51. 
Okay, she's very young. That's good. So what she's got to do is she's got to control the she's got to minimize the amount of food that that she's eating. For one, uh, she needs her nutrition, but her calories she's got to be very careful of. Get her on a nutritional supplement program. Uh, get her on the Healthy Start Pack, and have her uh, staying away from any foods that cause her digestive distress. Also, you want her on what are called probiotics. That's good bacteria. You probably heard that term. Uh, maybe um, get her on the nightly essence from longevity, perhaps uh, nine capsules a day, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night. Lots of vegetable juices, homemade vegetable juices, not V8. Uh, and then also uh, chicken soup, but homemade chicken soup, not Campbell's or restaurant chicken soup, but real chicken soup where you take the bones, you take the whole chicken, and you make sure you dissolve the whole thing in water. And you want the bones to dissolve. The cartilage factors in the bones are very helpful, not just for the cold colon, but also for colon cancer. Uh, but it's very, very important that she gives her colon as little work to do as possible so it can do its work of healing and recovering. And that means staying away from any foods that cause digestive distress and keeping her caloric intake down to a minimum. Also, you're going to make sure she's, uh, if it were me, I would be doing the, uh, uh, the uh, a Fucoid Z made with Fucoid, which has got wonderful anti-cancer benefits and also beta glucan. And longevity has got a great beta glucan product. Of course, the name has escaped me right now, but you might want to just look up beta glucan at longevity.com or call 866-735-2470 and ask them about their beta glucan. And last but not least, aloe vera juice have her sipping on that every day uh, along with her beyond tangy tangerine she's doing she, sh she should be doing uh, a couple of uh, a couple of shot glasses minimum of aloe vera juice and that's great for everything but especially for the colon and also has anti-cancer benefits uh, if she wants to do a couple more things intravenous glutathione and intravenous vitamin C. I know I said a whole bunch of stuff there. Uh, oh, one last thing, the ultimate selenium, 600 micrograms a day. I know I told you a whole lot of stuff there, but if you go to benfuchsarchives.com or brightsideben.com, you can review the program and review the answer because uh, there's so much to talk about here, and I don't expect you to remember it all, but you can always review it at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. I got to motivate. I hope I helped you out, and God bless you, and I hope everything works out with your mom. Joe, thank you for calling. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. Take care. All right, Rick in Michigan, welcome to the bright side. What's going on? Hi, pharmacist Ben, long time listener, big fan. Thank you. I appreciate that. What's up? I have an 18 month old grandson that has some psoriasis on his face. Okay. And that's, I know you're such you're such a big skin guy, but that's you know, my deal. The is the skin. are so important. Yes, sir. You know, I got into the, I started to understand, really understand. I mean, we learned about it in pharmacy school, internal nutrition and the importance. This is something a lot of folks don't realize is in pharmacy school, we study nutrition, but we study nutrition as if nutrients and vitamins and minerals were, are medicines. We don't study nutrients like a dietitian studies it or a nutritionist studies it. We study it like a pharmacist studies it, which means therapeutic and as uh, for its therapeutic or their therapeutic and medicinal value. So, Amen. But for an 18 month old, it's oh, yeah. hard gift. No, no. Yeah. It's, I was going to say it's very easy because there's not a lot of things an 18-month-old is doing. You know, if it was an adult, they're doing all kinds of stuff. An 18-month-old is just sitting there. So there's not a lot of stuff yep. going on here. So it's very easy, actually. Is he breastfed? Is he being breastfed? He was. He's done with that. Okay. Is the mom... He was breastfed initially. Then he went through a little bit of formula, and now he's almost completely off that and on... Okay. When did the psoriasis... Diet, but he can't... Well, hang on, Rick. Hang on, buddy. Omegas in him. Hang on, Rick. Hang on. When did the psoriasis appear? I would say within the last three months. So from the time he's a uh, little over a year old, a year and a half. What's the, relation, what's the relationship between the psoriasis that appeared three months ago and his weaning off of breast milk and going to formula? Ooh, I can't tell you. Well, you should find that out because it has something to do with what's getting into the baby's system. He's, the okay. baby's not doing IV drugs. The baby's not smoking. The baby's not, right? The baby's not uh, uh, breathing in coal mine dust or any, you know, toxic substances. So it's obviously something the baby's eating. Because the bet, psoriasis. Now, I used to have. Well, here hang on, hang on, Rick. Hang on, hang on, Rick. Yep. Uh, psoriasis is an immune system condition. That okay. means it's a okay. that means it's a defensive response. The body is defending itself. So what is the body defending itself against? Well, something that's getting into it, and that has to be food. 
All right, so you got to, or it could be a breakdown in the digestive tract too. So number one, you got to link the symptoms to foods. Now the psoriasis okay. will flare up. It will get worse and it will get better. The flare ups are your best friend for detecting what's causing the problem. Okay. When, the, when the psoriasis flares up, what did the baby eat? That's the first way. That's the first thing you're going to do. The second okay. thing you're going to do is if the baby can do vegetable juices, you want to get him some vegetable juices. And if the baby okay. can do uh, probiotics, they make liquid probiotics for babies. You want to get them on a liquid okay. probiotic. If the baby okay. will do fermented food, that'll work too. But you want to support okay. the intestine. Now, if mom was unhealthy when she was breastfeeding, if mom was not nutritionally competent herself, or if she had problems with allergens or toxins, which is very likely, if she had an okay. immune system problem, those factors would have gotten passed in the breast milk and those will impair colonic health too so okay. it's very important that you start to work on the health of the colon if you can get the baby some vitamin a that is helpful and uh, sunshine is incredibly important for psoriasis uh you're in michigan you probably have some sunny days out there th uh, this yeah, time well, of year this summer we've had a few usually it's bad get the baby out in the sun get him some vitamin d and if you can Good. get him some some baby vitamin a that would help as well real vitamin a not the beta carotene stuff but the real vitamin a so you're going to focus okay. on the How intestine. Omega oils. Are omega I was about oils to say, absolutely, 100%. Okay. Both omega-6 and omega-3. Omega-3 is okay. because they're anti-inflammatory. Omega-6 is because they're important for the skin. Now, if he has uh, any problems uh, uh, you, absorbing or utilizing fats, it would be a good idea to get him to eat uh, the, uh, get him to take his fatty foods, uh, fatty substances in foods rather okay. than supplements. That is fish. Uh, if he'll eat fish, um, avocados, yep. Uh, yep. Give him, you can maybe give him a little bit of fish oil. Sometimes that helps. But if he's got a problem metabolizing or utilizing his fats, a liver problem or an intestinal problem, it's going to be a little bit tricky. But still, okay. a teaspoon of omega-3 uh, omega fish oil might help him or it may perhaps uh, 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 a fish, uh, fatty, fatty foods like fat, uh, fish so, yeah, and avocados. Salmon type, uh, wild salmon salmon type stuff. There you go. Yep. There you go. Yep. Yes. Anything else, bro? Colloidal minerals, is that important with that too? I know it's not necessarily important for psoriasis, okay. but it's important for health. So okay. everybody okay. Should, everybody will benefit from colloidal minerals, babies as well as adults. All right, Rick, I gotta move. Thank, thank you so much. Thank God bless you, so you, my friend. Bye -bye. All right, take take a great have a great day and uh, thanks for calling. All right, Bob in Minneapolis, Minnesota, welcome to the bright side. Hi, Ben. Hey. <laughs> two questions for two questions for you. Um, do stimulants or any stimulant, but such as like theo uh, bromine and uh, theo Theophylline? Theophylline, they, yes. It's, okay, Theophylline. Uh, do they come to the effects of uh, lecithin, bile salt, and vinegar as far as uh, their efforts to maximize the uh, nutrient absorption into your system? Uh, no, not necessarily. I'm not sure where you're going with this. Are you saying, do stimulants block absorption of nutrients? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, ah, I see. What you're if you're trying to, you know, do the right things with the bio yeah. Into stimulants will shut down the bodies. Of, yes, that's it. That is true. Stimulants will will uh, mimic the stress response, and under conditions of stress, nutrient absorption will be suppressed. So yes, indeed, you will lose some some of uh, it will have an impact on nutrient absorption, and you'll lose some of the benefits of your supplements. But. Uh, I'm not a big believer in stimulants. There's a lot of problems associated with that. And your point is well taken. That will have an impact on nutrient absorption, probably. Bob, i got to go. I'm just out of time. Thank you, thank you for right. your call. And I'm sorry that we left you on hold if we did that. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.